Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. We take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. We put them on a screen here in front of us and we ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. That's right, because we all know I do not like <clears throat> to see the questions before they get asked. Seven years, seven? Six years. It'll be six years in July that we've been doing this. This we've piece, never yeah. wanted to see. Mm -mm. Never wanted to see the questions. Mm -mm. So you get a real, true, organic, spontaneous response. Paul K. asks, I okay. understand that Canada's central bank does not hold any gold. Yep. Do you know why? And what does it mean for a country that does not hold gold? I don't actually know why they decided to divest themselves of the rest of the gold, which I think they did in... So I could be off on this since I don't have that data right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it was 2019 is when I want to say they got rid of oh, the I rest of the gold. Oh, it was a lot longer ago than that. Was it? Maybe. I don't know. Look it up. Well, I don't, I'll do I don't a, I'll really... I'll do a search and see if I can Yeah, do a search. But <laughs> what it means for a country... I mean, Great Britain did the same kind of thing. And then they were very sorry that they did it afterwards and they took a lot of heat. So what does it mean for a country does not, that does not hold gold? It means that they will not remain autonomous as we go through all of this. Because you can see the countries that are rapidly accumulating <laughs> gold, which is, when was it? Well, so what's funny is it, they said, so this was reported by Kitco News back in May of 22, but they said, Gold is an antique instrument, and that's why Canada sold all of its gold reserves. Well, and they said they started selling it off in the what? early 2000s. Yes, but when did they finish? Um, well, I would think more, more recently if they're just, they were talking about it in 2022 as a relic, like an antique, but it doesn't say in here. So they started in the early 2000s, um, but it doesn't say when they finished finished. But yeah, and I could be wrong with 2019, <laughs> but that's kind of in my recollection. I That's when I think they finished selling it off. But at any rate, what it really means, it, we can look at the countries that are right now rapidly accumulating gold, like China and Russia and India and Kazakhstan, et cetera, et cetera. And we can also see where the fault lines are between uh, countries that are taking sides. And really what it means, if you don't hold gold and the global fiat money system hyperinflates away, whoever does hold the gold, number one, can have the wealth transfer their way, but they're the ones that hold power and choice. And we, can all, we all see that there is a, a shifting of power from the, from the West, the U.S., etc., to the East, China, India, Russia, <clears throat> you know, the BRICS nations, etc. So what it means is that they just won't hold any power. That, that's actually what it means. Whoever doesn't have gold right. is screwed in so, this transition. So 2018, they had 77 ounces left. They'd sold off the bulk of it, the last of it, in 2018. 18. So you're almost... So I was you're close. All very, well, because it could have been the end of 2018, so you're really close. And then what's interesting, and they said... Gold costs money to hold, store, protect, all that stuff, and it's easier just to have like U.S. and Eurozone monetary <laughs> instruments. Unfortunately, <coughs> <Holy cow. clears throat> what, what, what governments but what people will also do in the name of convenience ends up not being very convenient. Yeah, when the, well, time will, time will show, right? Absolutely, 100%. So, uh, do you, are you done with Hugh. that question? I am. Okay. Hugh asks, graded coins come in sealed plastic containers and the containers must be destroyed to actually touch the coin. Mm -hmm. I see these containers as a third party risk for a fake coin. The Chinese are copying everything these days. Isn't there an advantage to having a coin you can touch? I can touch my bullion and when I bought it, I tested it for purity using resonance frequencies using the Android app bullion test. Um, well, so first of all, with, y yes, you could, you, somebody could replicate this container, right? But, mm -hmm. uh, if 
if it comes straight from PCGS, like a lot of the coins, if we get them graded, then they come straight from PCGS. We know they're 100% authentic. But we also, and all of the wholesalers around the country, also test the coins, number one, uh, using the best thing you can use to test any gold or silver coin is called a Sigma Metalytics machine. Um, and it uses uh, current to do that. And it can go right through this plastic container. Um, so everything that we sell and anything that's really going through trusted dealers is tested out there in the market. Um, so it's known that it's a real coin. Uh, and you know, there's other research that wholesalers can do on serial numbers. There's pictured logs of actual collectible coins that when PCGS and NGC grade them, that can be viewed to make sure if there's like any question, if it seems like it could be fake, that it can go back and look, they can go back and look at other records to make sure. So believe me, th these things can be tested and are very highly scrutinized by buyers in the market to make sure that they're, they're real. So, But isn't that the point of going through a dealer like us? Yeah, for Because sure. we have long-term relationships. 100%. Right. So, I mean, I would not be buying it off of eBay or any, you know, off the street. And we don't buy gold off the street. We make sure that it goes through all the dealers so that it goes through all of those procedures and we can guarantee their authenticity. And then and then when it's time or if somebody needs to liquidate, we already have all that information because they bought it from us. They're mm -hmm. selling it back through us. Correct. So uh, and, you know, for me personally, this is the only kind of gold that I like to buy <clears throat> because I don't trust bullion at all. I, I think there could be an overt confiscation since for all these years, there has been and continues to be a covert confiscation. Inflation is a form of confiscation. Right. Absolutely. And price manipulation <clears throat> of the spot market, which is just a contract market, is also a form of confiscation. So call it what you may. Uh, personally, I don't buy any bullion. I, I buy silver bullion. I don't care about that. But gold? No, this is the way I want it. I know that it's real. I know that it is what you they do say have, that it is. We do. Both of us have gold, though, that are like um, fractional gold. That's older gold. That's ne not Raw. necessarily. Yes, that's not Correct. in a plastic container, right? So we might have old $20 libs or, or five dollars or, or tens, and a half right or one. smaller I, I mean i have all the sizes right mm -hmm. and they're not in a container right because they're just raw right and they're they trade closer to the the bullion price they're not really collectible per se um but uh yeah so but but we still get those <laughs> through the dealers so that right. means that they're still well, and we guaranteed to be too. yes we can right but they're guaranteed we use a sigma metalytics say. machine mm -hmm. ourselves and we can test them right through the plastic Okay, Carol Kay asks, I have been considering the possibility of purchasing T-bills maturing in a few months to one year as an alternative. If the U.S. defaults, do these T-bills go with it? Well, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because Janet Yellen has said that she could run out of her ability to manipulate the numbers by June 1st of this year. And then if you look at what's happening with both the T-bills... Okay. And the credit default swaps, the CDS market, uh, would it be a permanent default? Probably not. We're not at that place where we're just going to say, no, we're not going to pay them. And they probably will choose not to pay if they do default or run out of money and, and lose that ability. Chances are pretty good that they're going to choose other things and not the treasuries. So there's kind of like if the if the U.S. defaults, do the T bills go with it? That's what the CDSs are saying. That's what the traders are saying. Yes, but it might be just a short term that they don't pay it, like a few days or something like that. It's you know I I I it's here's my hesitancy. It's hard for me to imagine at this moment that the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. government would say, no, we're not paying any of the Treasury bonds. Right, to default on those Correct. would be absolutely catastrophic. Catastrophic. Yeah, it would be on a global basis, <clears throat> certainly yeah. in the U.S., but on a global basis since so many countries hold. Yeah, so chances many of are our, probably very low. Right. Especially in the short term like you're talking about. Right, right. However, I might ask, 
why you are purchasing, you know, T-bills, is it a little bit of pickup of interest over cash? Because I'm thinking this has got to be your emergency money. You wouldn't put anything that was an emergency into a short-term basis. So, well, there's a lot of people that have been moving out of stocks, like bigger portfolios and moving into T-bills and stuff temporarily and, you know, getting interest on it because they're taking risk off the table, which would be, you know, not, well, not emergency money. That would be not emergency money. And you're right. There are a lot of people that are doing it. And so what are you doing? You're going from the frying pan into the fire? Because well, truthfully, how safe is the currency when we already know that we are losing the status as the world's reserve currency and, and we vote with our wallets. And this is what I've been really trying to push so people get that concept, right? If you buy T-bills, if you buy stocks, if you hold a 401k full of ETFs and mutual funds or annuities or any of that stuff, you are voting for the dollar and you are voting to allow them to rob you of your wealth much easier. When you buy physical gold and silver and pull it out of the system, you are voting against the dollar. Yeah, you're like your own central bank. Exactly. So this is my personal vote. I don't own any T-bills, nor do I intend to. Do I have some cash? Yes, I have some cash. I'm running a business. This is how the bills get paid because it's our tool of barter. But anything other than that? No. No, I don't. Because yeah, what and, really and to is... to be honest, too... I mean, if you're just looking for short-term interest, there's there's so many accounts right now at banks that can get you interest where the cash is immediately liquid, right? Or, or the money markets. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, but, but any of that think, is risky. Yes. Like, I don't own that garbage. But if you buy if you buy a T bill today, again. like I don't know what they are, but let's say they're four or five percent, something like that, and you think they're definitely cutting rates in 2020. Then buy Four. a long bond if you believe in the dollar. Then you would because then, you're going to get you could, more fluctuation. Right, you can get better price price appreciation right, and maybe get like a twelve percent return rather than the five percent. So people are doing it, and Lynette's not a big fan. But but you have to do we, whatever we, you're comfortable. We always hold with. the view of if you have gold and silver enough to protect what you've built, then you can go out and speculate speculate on whatever you want to that's right right you can go speculate in the bond market the stock market whatever you want just have the amount of gold and silver you need to protect yourself so that you can go be i'll have a little bit more freedom to make the decisions that you want to make but yes you can definitely i think putting money in t-bills and and worrying about a u.s default is probably low chances like right i I, I don't think we're i don't think we're ready to do that at this point yeah I mean, they're, they're definitely playing Russian roulette. So there is a short-term chance that they might. I mean, look, it was once unthought of that, that, you know, that we could default. And now there is, the Wall Street is saying that is a possibility. Do you think, though, that we would really default? No. No, no, why would we? It's always, we can just it's always grow showmanship more debt and gaming. So that we can create right. more money. It's just it's a distraction. political posturing. Right. It's it's garbage. It's just, you know, no, I don't I don't think that we're yeah. ready to go there yet. No. Okay. Agreed. All right. Gary A asks, You've mentioned several times that the SDR is likely to replace the US mm -hmm. dollar as the reserve currency. Even though SDR is more common among countries. Wouldn't the petro yuan create demand for the yuan globally, making it the reserve currency and thus become more common than an SDR? Well, they anything could happen. And we certainly can see the petro yuan. We can certainly see the relationship between China and Saudi Arabia and France, you know, growing. So no doubt about that. But it is really... It can become a problem, as we've seen in the U.S., to have one country and one currency as the world reserve currency because it requires you, as the lender of last resort and the supporter of the world, to run massive deficits. So I still go back to the SDR, and I think we're, I still think we're going to end up with two, a dual currency system, one globally, the SDR, because that is a basket of currencies and it can it can encapsulate 
every single currency on the planet. So it would make it very easy to trade on a global basis. And it would also give the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, a whole lot more prestige and power. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, you got a lot more power in the more centrally, even more centrally located to, a, to central banks. Exactly. I mean, that's something that they want. Exactly. I mean, why give it to China when you can build it yourself? Yeah, and I'm not 100 I, I China definitely wants a lot more control <clears throat> and a yeah. lot more power on the global stage. So absolutely zero doubt about that one. But do I think that they really want to carry that whole weight? Um, I'm not exactly sure what the advantage would be to them directly, I mean, well, I mean, it was a huge advantage to us because it did create an artificial demand for our currency. But I, I think we're, I think we're evolving to a more global currency system. So therefore, the SDR still makes the most logical sense. I agree. All right, Sweet and Sour asks, can a currency be backed by gold and silver at the same time? Sure. I mean, we did have a dual currency system with both gold and silver before, so the answer is yes. Yeah, it's called, what is it called? Bi uh, bimetal, bi bimetal. Yeah, bimetal system. And my opinion, you know, on a silver-backed currency, sure, I, I could see us going back to a... Mm, well, the problem with silver is it gets used up in industry whereas gold is recoverable. So, um, you I know, mean, I don't- It could be bimetal. It could be bimetal. It could be bimetal. I mean, I mean, it was bimetal for a very long time, mm -hmm. right? They only took silver out of the currency, what, in the 60s? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could, and, and it has been. So historically, there is that precedence, and I'd be okay <clears throat> if that happened again, but I don't think it's going to. But. I would be perfectly okay if it did. Oh. Rhino76 asks, okay, now you have me confused. I like bullying. What's wrong with it? Go back and watch almost any of our videos. <laughs> right. But uh, the, the problem with bullying is it's, it's new stuff. And historically, there is a precedence for governments confiscating bullion. And I'm not even, ta I'm, I'm even talking current history. You know, I mean, we've seen it in Nigeria within the last few months. Uh, and we've seen it in India. We've seen it. We've seen it in many places. In, in several years in ago, US. the U.S. Well, certainly the U.S. Thing. more than once. So I personally believe that we are going to see an overt confiscation. So if I can buy it and hold it inside of an IRA, that is the easiest way for them to confiscate because they easily manipulate the price. So they can say to you, let's say that spots at $3,000 when they decide to do an overt confiscation. They can easily say, and we'll pay you $4,000. And they go into your IRAs and do a big sweep because no depository is going to say, oh, no government, we're gonna protect the gold of our clients. <laughs> So it's easy to do a sweep and most people not understanding that that price is manipulated anyway because they could create as much gold and silver that does not nor ever will exist, that they can easily manipulate that price. So they go in, they do that sweep, everybody would go, well, that's okay because look, at gold is only worth 3,000 and they're paying me 4,000 rock and roll hoochie coo, that's okay with me. And then what they'll do is they'll reset it toward its fundamental value after they get all your gold. So if so I can in hold 33 it- 33 and 34. Exactly. And so if I can hold it inside of an IRA, that's not the kind of gold that I'm buying. But for me, my uncle, who was a major antique dealer back <coughs> East, and this was 1964, and my parents and I were at his house, and forgive me for those that have heard this story a million times, but my parents and I were at his house and he goes, come here, I wanna show you something. And he took us in a back bedroom and there were two tall floor safes. Now I was 10 years old at the time. And he opened the doors and he said, if anything should happen to me, Aunt Bertie is, will be well taken care of for the rest of her life because of what's in these safes. So I turned around and I looked and you could not fit one more $20 gold piece in those safes. 
I didn't really understand what I was looking at at 10. But what I did come to realize one day when I was writing, and I said, if you were around like I was in 1971, and then I realized what that lesson was. Because prior to, what, 86, you could not hold more than five, legally. Prior to 1975. More than 75, thank you. 86 is 86 when they started is when they, the illegals. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but you couldn't hold more than five ounces of gold legally in any other capacity than the way that my uncle was holding them. Exactly. So that was really a big lesson for me. So that is why I personally do not hold any <laughs> bullion. And the fact that it is so severely, gold is so severely undervalued and suppressed because a rise in gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So they have to suppress the price until all confidence is lost. And once that happens, to regain the confidence, that's what they do their overnight resets again because this currency has no intrinsic value and it's used in one place. Gold is all intrinsic value because it's used across every sector of the global economy. So they revalue that paper, how much they printed, how much debt there is against that currency. And that's when you start to see gold and silver, but primarily gold is the primary currency metal, start to express to its fundamental value. So at this point, I can buy the collectible gold so far below its true value that it covers me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. And if I can do something that doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong, if you hold bullion, you gotta be right, okay? But if I hold collectibles, doesn't matter whether I'm right about the confiscation or I'm wrong about the confiscation. And the little bit of difference, because we are still severely below the premiums, the historic premiums, so it doesn't really matter. That little bit of difference to me is my wealth insurance. Well, and with, you said the premiums are, the premiums are low compared to where they've been in the past. So there's yeah. a lot of opportunity for the collect collect collectible gold to exceed the performance of bullion, which it has done many times in the last 45 years. Right. Um, okay. And it's doing it right now too, isn't it? Doing what? Isn't, aren't the collectibles uh, exceeding the performance of bullion? Yeah, 100%. We have oh, the collectibles yeah. well, it's, that it's, have broken out. You'd have to, you have to look at what, what time frame, right? So well, I think we were looking at portfolios from even 2018, 2019 and had far exceeded what the performance of bullion. Well, we, yeah, without a doubt. We, you know, without a doubt. Like some, because some gold the is what double. the bullion they have to suppress because that's what people look at and go, oh, well, that's how much gold is worth. But the collectibles are pure supply demand market mm -hmm. and demand has been exceeding supply. For sure. So the premiums are <clears throat> still low, but yeah, the, the, the coins have really outperformed the bullion. Yes. Because I, I've been showing them breakouts. I should do, I should just do a video just on that, just on the premiums and where we are right now. I'll, I'll put something together. All right, well, that's it for today. Oh, Edgar, okay. send me the, que the lives. Okay. Send so, me the questions at itmtrading.com. Yes. So make sure that you watch yesterday's video. Really interesting. The mysteries behind First Republic Bank's failure and JP Morgan's acquisition. I'm sure at a very, very favorable rate for JP Morgan. But there's a lot of mystery that's around that. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please go watch that video. Also, we have, you know, a lot of the feedback that we get is that people feel really alone. So we've started the Thrivers community, which is a community that everybody comes in to help each other and is really quite wonderful. You can find it at the Thrivers, thriverscommunity.com or the Thrivers community on the App Store or Google Play. And make sure you also subscribe to our Beyond Gold and Silver channel that deals with all of the mantra. So food, water, energy, security, barter ability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. And by the way, this past week, I'm so excited about this, but we finally put the orchards, or started to put in the orchards up at the bug out location. So 
Two weeks ago, we had the first of the planting going in the hot houses. Now we've got the orchards in. So that was my, I felt very uncomfortable having, I didn't feel like where I really had the food under control up there. I had a lot of long storage food, but not the fresh food. Now I feel very relieved. So, and if you go to uh, Beyond Gold and Silver and certainly in Thrivers, you'll see a lot of material on that and ongoing. And if you haven't already, click that Calendly link below, set up a time with one of our gold and silver specialists so that you get your strategy together and start with your goals. And if you don't know how to formulate those goals, because for some people that's a little challenging, they'll ask you, the consultants will ask you questions to help you solidify what you're trying to accomplish. And then it's the right product for the job. It's the right kind of gold, the right kind of silver in the appropriate amounts to support your goals. That's what you put first. And then we'll help you build that out. But if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. Leave us a thumbs up if you like this. Leave us comments and share, share, share. Because physical gold and silver, metal is what makes up your financial shield not paper or promises or lies. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.